good to be here. Since I was here last time, Pastor Huffhand turned a year over. He's uh, 88 now, and he lo he's looking great and uh, doesn't seem to be any older at all. Never gets older, but we're glad to be here in this uh, early Sunday in December. Good to have Bev and Shelly with us and Theo and every one of you who are here so faithfully and regularly. Uh, every week. Uh, I must confess, I don't usually have a struggle with what I'm going to preach on, but I, I, I did this Sunday because uh, I'm going to be preaching at Thompson Road, the, I think, Christmas morning and be there th the next couple Sundays. So I have one Christmas message outside of Christmas, sun, Sunday morning, Christmas Day. And uh, when a pastor has pastored 50 years, he's got a stack of messages, Christmas messages. So to decide which one of those, just one of those, to preach, uh, it's uh, it sometimes, not usually, but this time was a little tough. I hadn't planned to preach what I'm going to preach until just probably yesterday. Uh, but I feel like this is the message I, God wants me to preach. It is uh, early December, and since uh, before Halloween, we've been reminded that Christmas is coming. And uh, when Christmas comes, there's usually, and rightly so, gift giving, giving of gifts. Uh, and I want to say that I'm thankful for my wife, who is uh, very good at knowing what people need, what they would like to have. She does 99.99% .99 of the shopping in our household, Christmas shopping, that is. <laughs> and I'm so glad for that. That other 1% I do, and that's buying her a gift. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate people that have that ability. And it is an instinctive thing, what people would appreciate and what they need. Uh, as you think back on some of the gifts you've received at Christmas time, or maybe some other time, but I'm thinking of Christmas. You know, when you were a kid, you had dreams of uh, waking up to a bright, shiny, red Schwinn bicycle. I think they still make Schwinn, but it's not like it was in 1955. Uh, that was the Cadillac of bicycles, Schwinn. And uh, so. But one Christmas morning, I woke up to not a Schwinn bicycle, not a Daisy rifle, BB gun rifle, that would have been a coveted present, too. But I woke up to a doll, D-O-L-L, -L, doll under the tree with my name on it. Now, it was not a little cuddly girl doll. It was a boy doll. And it was about half as, well, I was not that tall then, but it was kind of a life-size doll. Well, what's a six- or seven-year-old boy do with a doll? Probably not much at first. But I learned uh, that Joe, I named him Joe. Joe and I could get along. And um, so he was my audience, my Sunday morning and Sunday evening audience to preach to. I would assemble any chairs I could find uh, in a bedroom or a room. And uh, Joe always sat on the back row. He was a pretty good Baptist. He, he got there early so he could get the back row seat. That didn't bother me at all. He was there in the room and I could, I could reach him. But uh, my text was usually the same text always. That's Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God. And you can preach all day long on that text, I found out many times. And I don't know how many times Joe got saved, I think just once, but he made many decisions. About every service he would make a decision. So that's a gift. I'm still talking about it uh, 60, 70 years later, so it, uh, it was a gift. Uh, I did lose a brother that uh, just shortly before there to a tragic drowning accident. So maybe my mom, I don't know what, Ellen just gave me this thought recently, uh, thought I needed a, a friend, having lost my older brother. But uh, whatever her reason, uh, it, was a, it was a gift. So we're thinking about giving. I know you are. Uh, even though I don't buy the gifts in our family, I think about 
giving, receiving, it's a special time. When people celebrate, they give gifts, often. In fact, in a perverse way, in Revelation chapter 11, uh, when the two prophets who have been preaching here in the, the tribulation, last part of the tribulation for three and a half years, uh, and God divinely protected them from death, uh, nobody could kill them. Uh, they were his ministers. But after they had accomplished their mission, they did die. And uh, it says that people were so th thankful that, and thrilled that they were dead that they gave gifts one to another. They celebrated by giving gifts. Well, they thought they were rid of those two prophets, but three and a half days later they came back to life and then ascended back to heaven. But we're thinking about giving gifts today because uh, of Jesus coming into this world. We celebrate. We celebrate his, uh, his coming. And probably everybody here could quote with me John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. Somebody said, you've heard it said, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. If you love somebody, you're going to give. You're going to give yourself. You're going to give some treasured gift that you treasure. If the more you love, the more you, the more treasured the gift is. In fact, I read one commentator said that verse: "For God so loved the world that He gave," could be translated that He gave up. He gave for. He made the world. He made all that is therein, and he made man and breathed into the breath of life, and he became a living soul in his image. And man sinned and became a rebel against God. But God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten son, his most treasured possession, the Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten. Uh, never was a time when he was not with him eternally. Uh, but he gave him up for the world. <laughs> Spurgeon said, what was there in the world that made God love it? It was an arid desert of sin. Uh, as you think about mankind before uh, God intervened with a plan of salvation, and he did. But I want to think, I want you to think with me this morning about uh, God giving. And... Uh, in Romans chapter 6, the last verse, I think it is, we quote it often when we're talking to somebody about their need for Jesus. And that verse is, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages, I mean, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, so we all are under that penalty. The wages of sin is death, separation, eternal separation from God. Not just physical, we're dying physically, but uh, separation from God eternally. The wages of sin is death, Paul said, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, we often think about eternal life as being... <coughs> Life with no termination. Eternal. It's never going to end, and that's true. It's everlasting. Uh, but it's also a, a different kind of life, a life that is uh, in a different sphere, a different dimension, a different depth. In fact, Jesus, identified, Jesus uh, defined uh, what eternal life was in that prayer that he prayed to his father on his way to Calvary. Uh, I want to quote that, if I could. John 17. It's uh, what we call the high priestly prayer of Jesus. He said, "This is eternal, and this is eternal life. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, not just everlasting, that's true, but it's more than that. It's uh, life that gives us the opportunity 
and the privilege and the possibility and probability of knowing God personally. Uh, no other uh, religion, so to speak, could boast that or say that. that. I mean, if you've been to a foreign country, you've seen maybe like Mexico, um, you've seen Pastor Huffman and I were there together years ago visiting a missionary in the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Otis Seals. We've supported him and still do from the beginning of time. Uh, but down there in, that was just a, a, an expression, forever we've supported him. Uh, but down there you see along the roadside little places of worship where they have little statues or whatever, candles, uh, some maybe gift on the so-called altar, altar. It's sad because uh, those those gods uh, that are made with man's hands, made of stone and wood and whatever else, they're no gods. They're no gods. But Jesus said, the only true God, that they, that they might know thee, the only true God. This is life eternal. This is life eternal. Oh, it's the most prized gift anyone could have. I was thinking of some prized gifts, not just Joe, but uh, all of us have received some special gifts. Uh, when we were in Kansas as pastor, there was a young man, we barely knew him, but he, he made for us a replica out of a kit of the USS Constitution. It was beautiful. I mean, you could sit on the mantle of a fireplace and it, you could be proud of it. Uh, he gave himself to make that. I mean, it took hours and hours and hours, put himself into it, used his skill and his patience and whatever else. It was a wonderful gift. But like a lot of gifts, it got broken, I think, in the move out from Kansas to Indiana. It got jostled around, and it was such a delicate piece of artwork that it didn't, it didn't survive the trip. You can think of gifts you've had. I think of a gift that uh, I was able to get Ellen one Christmas back in Kansas again when we saw a beautiful lampshade at an antique store, and she loved it. And uh, I was able to buy it for her for Christmas, and somehow it got broken too, <laughs> as gifts do. Uh, cherished gifts. We have some cherished gifts in our home now. I hope they never get broken, but they probably will. Or when we pass on, somebody will think they're junk and give them away. You know what I mean? But life eternal. It's uh, to know God. <laughs> that will never. That will never change. That will be a gift that keeps on giving, as it were, and will be a precious gift uh, as long as time lasts. This is life eternal. Do you have that gift today? By the way, it's something you don't wait on in order to receive. You can have it today if you've never received it. You can receive it this morning. And this is life eternal. To know him. He sent his son Jesus Christ so that we could know him. God in flesh. God manifest in the flesh. So that we could know him personally. We can talk to him. We can worship him. We can live, and we do live in his presence. We live in his presence. He's not a God that far off. <laughs> uh, he's with us always. He's not only with us, but he's in us. Uh, and so it is, a, it is an amazing gift. Jesus said in John 10, 28, I give unto them, I give unto them eternal life. I give unto them eternal life. Talking about his people that knew his voice and followed him, his sheep. And they shall never perish, he said. Neither shall any man pluck them out of, <coughs> out of my hand. So, number one, uh, God so loved the world that he gave, and he gave us life that is eternal. This, this life that is eternal is irrevocable. He didn't just give us a gift and then come along a little bit later on and say, hey, I would like that gift back. Uh, and if it were up to me to keeping that gift, I would, I, would, I would lose it. I would not be worthy of it. I would be disallowed of having it. Eternal life, a 
personal knowledge of God, living in his presence, talking to him, having him hear me and answer my prayers. How could I expect to live in such a way to keep that one day? If it were up to me, I couldn't. But he gives us, by his grace, eternal life. And he's the one that does the keeping. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, we are kept, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation to be revealed in the last day. Well, I'm glad, does, I'm glad God does the keeping, aren't you, Gerald? He does the keeping. Oh, if it was up to you or me or anybody, we couldn't keep it one single day. We'd have to say, oh, well, I, I'm not worthy of that gift. Here, here it is. I've, I flubbed up today. I, I didn't do this or that, or I did this or that, and we, we would lose the gift. We would lose the gift. But we never will lose it. <coughs> Jesus said in John 4, 14, But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give. But did you notice those words? I repeat it to I shall give, I shall give, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It just keeps on going. It springs up. It's never dry. It's always fresh, new every morning. The water that he gives, he gives. So in the Bible, there are so many uh, affirmations about the fact that God gives. God gives us. Uh, it's, uh, it's a life that just will keep on going. It's a gift that keeps on giving. In hope of eternal life, that God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. Uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life. Is that your hope today? Uh, I don't know everybody personally. I can't say I believe you're a believer. I believe. No, that's God to judge. But I'm asking you, between you and him, is that your hope? Do you have that, that blessed hope, the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, he said he would give eternal life. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Uh, which God, who cannot lie, promised. And if God promises something, he will produce it. He will bring it to pass. And he drew up the blueprint before the world began. Promise before, okay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was the blueprint. All of us died. We all need to be saved. And so God says, here's my gift to mankind. In the person of Jesus, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Here's my gift. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did that when I was a child. Uh, <clears throat> and I've never been unsaved since that day. Never been unsaved. Never had to get saved again, even though I've sinned, yes, every day. I've fallen short of God's glory. I have. But I've never had to come and say, oh, I need to get saved again. No, because God said that he would give me, if I called upon his name, eternal life. And I would never perish. That's my hope. In hope, in hope, I have that blessed hope today of eternal life. Whom God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. Is that your hope today? I hope so. So this, this gift is uh, eternal it's irrevocable. It's, it's yours forever. It's a blessed hope. It's a certainty hope. It is a gift that is, it defies description. If your Bibles turn to Ephesians chapter 2, please. Ephesians chapter 2. I know I haven't announced any particular text because I've been quoting ver several verses, but I want to just stop on this, this passage for a couple minutes. Ephesians chapter 2. And this just shows you how unspeakable this gift is, beginning in verse two, verse 4 of Ephesians 2. But God, 
who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Now, in your mind, if not in your Bible, circle those superlatives. He's rich in mercy. He's great in love. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you saved. It raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. <laughs> Did you get that? The exceeding riches of his grace. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. If you're there, read it with me. It is the gift of God. It's the gift of God. Nothing you could do to deserve it. Nothing you could do to earn it. It's, it's God's gift to, to you, to mankind. It's the gift. And what is it? It's this gift that is rich in mercy and motivated by a great love, his love. Uh, and it's um, so that he could show the exceeding riches of his grace through his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved. So it's the gift of God. It's the gift of God. All you got to do is receive it. Now you got you need to believe in your heart by faith that God is and that He's rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. It's through faith we come to Him. Through faith, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by Him. But if you can believe those first three or four words of Genesis one one in the beginning, God, you can believe anything else in the Bible, and you should believe it. We should, and it's true. It's verifiable, but. So, I just want to say, it's, it's a gift that is, it defies description. And Paul did the best he could do, rich in mercy, uh, exceeding, the exceeding riches of his grace. Uh, so he, he uses, uh, from his store, store uh, house of words, the best words he could use, the, the most superlative, and says, this is what God has done for us, and it's by grace, and it's a gift, a gift, a gift. All you got to do is reach, receive it. Hope you have today. And by the way, if you have, <coughs> notice again in verse 6, it's a, it's a gift that is heavenly. He's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, that's in the past tense. Uh, I'm already seated together in heavenly places. That's why he says, set your affection on things above. Your affection needs to be where you are. Uh, in the mind of God, now I know I'm here physically. My soul and spirit's within me. But spiritually, uh, I've already been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3.3, 3, your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life, if you're saved. Your life is hid. Well, if my life is hid with Christ and God, what could happen to me that would be terrible? Well, a lot that would be terrible according to this, this world's perspective, but nothing eternally. I'm secure. I'm safe. I'm sound. I'm, I'm settled. I'm seated in heavenly places. Nothing can change that. Satan can't touch me. Nothing in the world could touch me. I'm there forever. And I shall one day pass from this world to that physically and spiritually. I'll be resurrected someday in my body, new body, glorified body, meeting together with my soul and spirit to be ever with the Lord. But I'm already there in the mind of God. It's already, see, it's already settled. Oh, what a, <coughs> what a gift. What a wonderful gift. Revelation 2, 7, Jesus said to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life. Revelation 2, 10, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. God's, he's in the business of giving. And he has so much to give. Peace I live with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you, he said in John 14, 27. Mark 10.45, for the Son of Man came to be came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give 
his life a ransom for many. So don't you see today we have we have a, a salvation that is the gift of God. Uh, it is uh, heavenly. It is superlative. It is irrevo irrevocable. It is eternal life. What more could I say? Well, I could say one more thing at least. I could say many, but I'll just say one more. What Paul said in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. It's unspeakable. I can think of wonderful gifts that I've received, but they're all speakable. I'm wearing one here here. A few Christmases ago, my family, I don't know, probably my wife or the kids got me this smart watch, which is smarter than I am. I can't, I'm not smart enough to use it. It does say 1118, 1119 now. And you know what, when everybody's <coughs> unwrapping gifts and there's paper all around and there's boxes for trash, bags for trash, and those bags finally up in the well, we live right next to the church, so eventually they're going to go over the, the dumpster at church. And by the end of the day, I was looking around for my smartwatch, and it was nowhere to be found. It was nowhere in the house. I remember putting some boxes in one of those trash bags. <coughs> so don't you know who was in the dumpster, dumpster diving before Christmas Day was over? <laughs> That's where it was, down at the bottom. That old wet, uh, boy, I was glad to see that bag with that box in it, though. But I don't have to worry about the gift God gave me. It's secure. I'm secure. One day there was a, back in the years, when med, med, medical uh, students couldn't borrow from Uncle Sam up to their eyeballs, uh, there was a young man going door to door selling books, uh, maybe encyclopedias, I'm not sure, but he was a med student. He came to this farmhouse and knocked on the door and a young, bright young lady came to the door and he said, would you like to buy one of these and whatever book he was selling? She said, no. She said, I'm sorry, but my mother's a widow and we just don't have the money uh, to purchase anything right now like that. And the young man said, well, could you give me a drink of cold water? And she said, surely. Got him a drink. She said, by the way, we have some cold milk in the spring house if you'd like a drink of milk. And he did. And she offered him a second and he, he drank that and thanked her and went on his way. Years later, uh, years later, there was in a hospital near where that old farmhouse stood, a lady rolled in. She was very, very sick. Uh, they took her to a room after the doctors worked on her and Nurses were there waiting to serve and help her and administer to her needs. And many days later, a nurse came into that room and uh, she said, you're going to go home tomorrow. And the lady was so happy. When she had come in that night in the emergency, there was one doctor that took special note of her. And so the... Uh, the lady, so happy that she was going home, but she said, oh, the bill must be horrendous. I can't think of what the bill would be. And the nurse said, I'll bring you a copy moment in a few minutes, and you can look it over. So she brought her a list, of, and the lady just wept as she read line after line. You know how those bills are. They get big. But she come to the bottom of the bill, and it said, handwritten, Paid in full for a glass of milk. Paid in full for a glass of milk. What a gracious thing for a doctor to do. But he was remembered a kindness to him when he was a young med student that this same lady had offered. Well, I want to say today Jesus has paid your bill in full. We could never pay it. The wages of sin is eternal death. But... Eternal life negates eternal death and paid in full by the blood of Jesus. I hope you'll come to him if you've never done so. That Christmas day, if you were God and that were your son on the stable sod, 
wrapped for death with its sin-cursed sting. Would you have made the angels sing? They did, didn't they? I don't know who it was, but somebody said angels never sing. They sang that morning, that night. They couldn't do anything but sing. You can read about it in Luke chapter 2. Would you have sent that lovely star to guide the wise men from afar? While weaklings did what haters bid. While weaklings did what haters bid. Would you have done that? Our loving Father did. Our loving Heavenly Father did. He did. For God so loved the world that he gave. Oh, Father in heaven, thank you. For the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for Christmas and all that it entails. Gift giving, receiving, singing, praises, carols, family gatherings, food, and fellowship, and fun, and festive times. And I think you're pleased with that. Not in the pagan way the world keeps Christmas, but in the Christian way singing songs about Jesus and away in the manger as we've sung this morning all the other bless this assembly as they continue these remaining weeks of December and days to to sanctify you in their hearts as they commemorate another Christmas coming Lord it's a sin cursed world it's a darkened stage of humanity that you look upon today as it always has been. But yet the light of the world is Jesus. He came, he lived, he died, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, who, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. May many, during these next days and weeks, See the light and turn to the light to be saved. Somebody here today is not saved. May this be the day they would say, oh, I want to have that hope in my heart and life and be saved today. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen.